we have this story, which I would like to go over bits bits of it. Uh, Ka Kamala please, Harris please, please. was not a progressive prosecutor. This is an opinion piece in the New York Times. Um, I would like to remind her. I mean, as you, as uh, as as Neb and you pointed out, uh, Kamala was chosen for the purposes of her pigmentation, but her politics are actually uh, quite bad for black people and, and were while she was uh, both a senator and a uh, the attorney general of California. I mean, one thing that she did was she helped usher in a law that would um, that forced the parents uh, of, of truant children to face up to $2,500 fines or up to a year in jail. Um, so I'm going to read some quick pieces from this uh, article. Uh, consider her record as San Francisco's district attorney. Harris was criticized in 2010 for withholding information about a lab police laboratory technician who had been accused of, quote, intentionally sabotaging her work and stealing drugs from the lab. After a memo surfaced showing that Ms. Ms. Harris's deputies knew about the technician's wrongdoing in recent conviction, but failed to alert defense lawyers, a judge condemned Ms. Harris's indifference to to the systemic injustice, uh, systemic violations of the defendant's constitutional rights. Ms. Harris cont contested the ruling by arguing that the judge, whose husband was a defense attorney and spoken publicly about the importance of disclosing evidence, had a conflict of interest. Ms. Harris lost. More than 600 cases handled by the corrupt technician were dismissed. So, long story short, up to 600 people were wrongfully convicted, and, and Kamala Harris fought to, to to block the overturning of their convictions um this article just, goes just, on and but, on like can this I just, can I just butt in just really quickly yeah, as well please. like i was completely unfamiliar with kamala harris until she decided to until she ended up in the the democratic um primaries um and i uh, i just knew that she had this background as a prosecutor based on like the way that she spoke and like how dishonest she was i had this sense in my mind that like she was 100 percent involved in like corrupt convictions and wrongful convictions of people so when yeah. this came out i was just like uh, again it was it was one of those times that you're depressed to be proven right and it's just like it's just like so horrific and this is like not the only example of, of, of this happening yeah, there's many examples in this. Uh, this article goes over a lot of individual cases. I'm not going to go through all of them. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. like, for example, sure. um, consider George Gage, an, elect an electrician with no criminal record who was charged in 1999 with sexually abusing his stepdaughter, who reported the allegations years later. The case largely hinged on the stepdaughter's testimony, and Mr. Gage was convicted. After the judge discovered that the prosecutor had unlawfully held back potentially exculpatory evidence, including medical reports indicating that the stepdaughter had been repeatedly untruthful with law enforcement. Her mother even described her as a pathological liar who lives with her lies. Uh, so the, uh, 20, in 2015, this case reached the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit in San Francisco. Ms. Harris's prosecutors defended the conviction. They pointed out that Mr. Gage, while forced to act as his own lawyer, had not properly raised the legal issue in the lower courts. So, I mean, she she she's trying to keep wrongfully convicted people in prison in on legal technicalities like oh he didn't properly bring the exculpatory evidence to the lower court um of course the kind of thing that a electrician would know how to do while representing himself as his own lawyer uh yeah. so it, she's got this very sick uh track record as a prosecutor that i mean if if like <laughs> i mean could you imagine this article in trump's hands during a debate oh yeah oh yeah but it's just i mean he denialator I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm shocked that Trump didn't make more of this when he like during the 2020 like campaign. I mean, he 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 had another open goal with Biden, uh, who, who already at that stage was quite clearly like losing his marbles at a at a rapacious rate and speed. And like, uh, uh, but um, no, uh, didn't really lay much of a glove on either of them. Maybe it would be different this time round. Well, and it, I, I mean, the, the, the shot is lined up for him because he can say, I've been wrongfully convicted. And this mm. woman on the other side of the stage has wrongfully convicted, you know, hundreds of black men, you know, and yeah. I, I, I don't know how well uh, she'll be able to maintain the black vote at, at that point. Um, yeah. So you have you have a long history of this. You uh, you had some really interesting finds that uh i had not seen before uh yeah but well, it's just i mean utterly uh, like utterly bizarre but also kind of like 
somewhat unsurprising. So in May 2015, a uh, a Kamala Harris aide um, and two of his associates, this is um, was a guy called Brandon Keel. And what's quite interesting is that if you look at mainstream media articles from the time, many of them don't actually identify Keel as her aide. They just say that one of her aides and they don't state who it is, uh, like bizarrely. So even at this stage, when she was like this relative, relative unknown, she was quite clearly enjoying some degree of media protection. Um, and it's so, yeah, that basically, um, well, yeah, one of her aides created a fake law enforcement agency called the Masonic Fraternal Police Department. And this was like a, a free, they, they made their own badges and ID cards and they had they had weapons and uniforms and police type cars. Um, and they were literally just going to unilaterally launch this Masonic police force. And it's just like, it's just completely, just completely insane. Um, and so, and Keel, Kamala Harris's aide um, took it upon himself to act as a recruiter um, in Southern California of, of, of police for this. And he approached existing law enforcement agencies and sent them letters and, and, and phoned them and said, oh, we should meet to discuss the, 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 this Masonic police force that I'm secretly running. Um, and he also claimed that they were the descendants. When they met, he met with some um, law enforcement agencies and explained that they were the descendants of the Knights Templar and the agency was actually created in, in uh, 1100 BC. And they had sovereign jurisdiction in 33 states and Mexico. Um, <laughs> this ABC News report stated the meeting raised red flags <laughs> with the with the LA <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> just like imagine, imagine they just kind of have this meeting, and then it's like a couple of weeks later, they're like, Oh, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah. Like <laughs> this guy said, they're the Knights Templar. <laughs> yeah, 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 and it's just like it, 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 it reports they couldn't answer basic questions about the MFPD, which is a great acronym. Um, I like it a lot. Um, yeah, the, the, and and the overall department mission. Um, they su subsequent investigations found the MFPD was not legitimate. <laughs> but but then you don't say. To Right, I know it's shock, shock horror. Like, the, the, there's um, if you go on to the next um, the one that the LA Times article, right? Yeah, hold so, just a moment. Yeah, wait, go. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, no, that's fine. I'll just, just give some preamble. So, this kind of vanished from public view. This very strange story in um, it, 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 this was in May 2015, the surface. Um, fast forward to the next year, and um, it, there is this, there is this astonishing. Um, accompanying photo of uh, so, but one of one of the people who was running this this fake Masonic police force. Um, yeah, if you can, can you zoom in at all on what he's yep. wearing, right? Okay, so this is this is a uh, David Inc. Henry, forty seven, alleged grandmaster of the bogus Masonic fraternal police department. Um, he died in strange circumstances after appearing in court. There was this is when the the, um, the their trial was ongoing. Look at what's hanging around his neck. It's like an Illuminati, like yeah. ornament with all of this Masonic stuff on it. It's just it's so weird. Uh, but yeah, then he died, and then this was just completely forgotten about. And so I'm sure that there's nothing suspicious there. Um, no, no, absolutely no. nothing to see here. Completely above board. Completely above board. Um, if we've got if we've got sound, I do think. It, it, let's yeah we speaking do we of, do speaking of speaking of weird um that we can catch some uh some embarrassing clips of kamala harris talking um just for our viewers let, uh, let, enjoyment can we go let's go to the ukraine one yeah okay go ukraine is a country in europe it exists next to another country called russia russia is a bigger country russia is a powerful country russia decided to invade a smaller country called ukraine so basically that's wrong why don't you go ahead and read the quote for us um okay sure um like <laughs> I, i'm getting um, a sadistic pleasure from from that yeah yeah well no yeah ukraine is a a country in Europe, it exists next to another country called Russia. Russia is a bigger country. Russia is a powerful country. Russia decided to invade a smaller country called Ukraine. So basically, that's wrong. Um, amazing um, geopolitical insight. Although, it, it, interestingly, 
th this feeds into um, a pet theory of mine, and it's just a pet theory of mine, which means it's it's absolutely right, un unless it, it, it isn't. Um, uh, so, and I, I can't be held accountable if it's wrong. Um, in effect, uh, so just just to, just to give you some background, in late 2018. Um, a bunch of files leaked on the internet related to the internal workings of a British intelligence front called Integrity Initiative, which spread fake news about Russia um, across the, the, the West. Uh, they were heavily involved in Russiagate and spreading the, the Steele's crooked dossier, uh, Christopher Steele's uh, dodgy dossier. They were involved in all sorts of efforts to spread to spread um, uh, stories of Russian meddling um, throughout, uh, yes, the Western world, with the purpose of demonizing Russia and preventing a diplomatic settlement in the uh, in the Ukraine conflict. Now, I went along to their secret offices in central London, which were in this very very grand building, which they wouldn't have had the funds to rent themselves. So, I mean, quite how they got their hands on it is uh, anyone's guess. Although um, the left as MI6 might have something to do with it. And this is a lot of the people who worked at Integrity Initiative were, were ex um, MI6, MI5 people. Now, um, I managed to get in to their actual offices, but by sheer fluke. And um, uh, the, uh, I was greeted by an individual uh, who introduced himself as Simon. Um, I shook his hand and then revealed that I was a journalist and wanted to speak about um, these lead documents. And he immediately stopped being charming and welcoming and looked like he wanted to murder me and started screaming and shouting and telling me to get out and um, uh, and, and just invading my personal space to the, to the extent that like, I, I found it very threatening, um, even though I was, was considerably taller than he was. Now, um, I was just sat outside on, on a bench uh, overlooking the Thames thinking, well, I've kind of screwed this story up. Like, I, kind of, I got into their HQ and I didn't really get anything. Um, I just kind of Googled, um, I looked at the Integrity Initiative's website and their staff list and uh, checked to, to see if I could find someone called Simon on it. Now, I, I did, and his full name was Simon Bracey Lane. So I Googled Simon Bracey Lane, and what comes up? Uh, a bunch of mainstream media articles talking about how he worked on Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign. Now, in this BuzzFeed article that you've got, if you go down to the part mentioning Simon, he is identified as someone who didn't have any background or previous interest in politics, but became interested in it when Jeremy Corbyn was elected Labour leader in September 2015. Um, and then who, subsequent to this, just so happened to be on a gap year, year holiday in the US and decided to just join the Bernie Sanders campaign, because that's a completely normal thing to do, isn't it? To have no interest in politics and then suddenly decide to get involved in, and volunteer on, on, on your own dime for a outsider political campaign. Nothing yeah, for a campaign on the other side of the world. Yeah. 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 And I might add as I might add as well that the integrity initiative, one of the reasons that it became embroiled in scandal was because they were smearing Jeremy Corbyn as a useful idiot of the Kremlin and, and, a, and a Putin pawn, which is completely illegal under state financing rules. Integrity Initiative received millions from the Foreign Office and the British Ministry of Defense. You're not allowed to engage in party political activity, but they did. And so, yes, this this former Corbyn fan. Um, works on Bernie's campaign, then returns to London and starts working for a British intelligence front, um, undermining <laughs> Sanders and Corbyn. Um, so yeah. I think that, yeah, that, that, that's really, anyway, so that's a bit of background. Now, um, uh, in during the Democratic primaries, Simon Bracey Lane, um, the totally not a spy in Bernie Sanders' campaign, he went on a uh, US podcast called Impressions of America, where he was talking about the Democrat, talking about Democratic nominees and, and who he thought was the best bet. He thought was effusively endorsing Kamala Harris. And as we've discussed, this is uh, at a time when she was performing in debates so badly that she dropped out without vo any votes being cast. Because I mean, there's Iowa. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this incredible clip of um, of uh, Tulsi Gabbard um, just completely annihilating Kamala, um, uh, and to which Kamala had like no response. So despite this, sh she was this totally not a British spy's pick for the Democratic nomination. Now. Um, this may just be a coincidence, but Integrity Initiative was run by an individual called Chris Donnelly, who, as we've discussed on, on the, the show here before, is a longtime British military intelligence operative, um, NATO advisor, 
and is running Britain's uh, contribution to the covert contribution to the Ukraine proxy war. Now, leaked documents I've reported on um, uh, show that Donnelly was extremely angry about Biden's quote unquote hesitancy and reluctance to embroil the US heavily into the proxy war. And he talks about how the US position must be challenged firmly and at once. And um, he also felt that Biden's fears of nuclear war erupting were completely ludicrous and cowardly. Now, um, Biden, yes, has just been gotten rid of and he's looking to he's potentially going to be replaced by someone who's even more pliable um and was the hot pick for a totally not british spy well and it's it's funny too because you had you have this like uh legacy of 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 fraud uh from both biden and kamala where uh biden had to drop out of one of his first presidential races for uh, for mm. over Lying. plagiarism allegations. Um, Kamala has liked to repeat this story about how when she was a toddler, her mother asked her about uh, about what she wants because she was throwing a fit of some kind, and she she looks up with you know these wide eyes and says freedom. Well, this is this is actually a story told by Martin Luther King, uh, not and Kamala was not the child. Who, who said this? So, um, mm. yeah, you have you have this uh, you have in both of them uh, vessels for the uh, wider uh, network, which I believe has just mm. succeeded in ousting Biden. Um, this being, of course, the um, the power players of the Obama administration. Yeah, and it's just and it's interesting that I mean, yeah, we call this this uh, episode media coup. Like, I actually think that. It, 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 what's really interesting, like I mentioned in the intro, is that like there the the publications that were leading the charge were all British based or British funded. It's like Politico, um, the uh, the FT, the Economist. That like uh, the day after the debate, they published like five or six articles each in the span of twenty four hours on yeah. on how he's got to go. Um, Obama at that point said, "Well, we all have bad nights." Biden, like, was sticking to the line that, "Oh, you know, it was just a, it was just a, a flub in an otherwise stellar career, and I'll be back, and you know, I, I, I'll, 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 I'll be back badder than ever and bigger than ever." Um, and and then like the media just kind of, there were certain elements of the the, the, the mainstream who were like kind of clinging on to this and and still saying, like, "Oh, well, he'll do this big press conference and he'll turn things around," and like, yeah, the the, the big know, boy Obama, press conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Obama's first debate with Mitt Romney did not go well and um it, you know and, and then but slowly but surely like the kind of floodgates opened a bit and I think the yeah the real turning point was the press conference where like he introduced Zelensky as President Putin and then um you talked about how Trump was his VP and and, uh, and that sort of thing I mean like it, 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 it even that that kind of performance was nowhere near as bad as he's been in the past except that for the very first time the mainstream media actually acknowledged it and then suddenly the the the, the tables turned and the, what well, the tide turned and he, the, his his donation started drying up and his polling ratings collapsed and it's like I think a this is an interesting example of how or when the very rare occasions the media tells the truth it has a real impact but also I think that it, 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 we're seeing with Kamala now she's being built up as this kind of almost like Martin Luther King style figure on the basis of nothing. Like nothing, like like like. There's no like policy ideas. There's no like kind of USP beyond she's not Trump and also she's a woman of color. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. Yeah, and I think that I think as well that yes, that based on the I, I gather from our viewers that they didn't actually hear an echo and the audio was fine. So maybe it was just on your yeah. End. We can but we like, can, we can go ahead and play the video if you like. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like there are so many videos of her talking publicly where she is very abrasive she just rambles incoherently she she evades basic questions she says nothing of substance um as we discussed like the media hype machine around starmer in britain where despite the fact he has the charm of a dead fish um there are now female columnists saying um competency is really kinky and it's like really turning me on 
like just yeah. how like how, how boring he is um like the, but people aren't buying it and i think that a lot of uh, outside a very specific bright kind of like lunatic fringe of the democratic party nobody is going to connect with her now a, another analogy to use would be Theresa May in in Britain, who became British Prime Minister in 2016 after the, after the Brexit referendum, um, she was talked up in the media as she was going to be this figure of stability and substance. And but but this was after being like the worst Home Secretary in history um, and many embarrassing media performances. Um, she was riding very high in the polls leading into the election the next year versus Corbyn, and it was widely anticipated that there would be a wipeout of Labour, like. Um, Actually, the more that she was exposed, the worse their chances became because she was very wooden, because she didn't connect with people and because she wasn't saying anything of value or interest. And I think the same thing will happen with Kamala is that she will probably have a very brief dead cat bounce period with the media where there is the New York Times and the Washington Post are talking her up as the as the savior of Western civilization. And then when actually she ha gets any exposure whatsoever, particularly yes, in like debates with Trump, it's going to be game over. Like yeah. it's, it's just, it's just, it's, she, she's going she's going to be finished because she does. There is nothing relatable or endearing about her at all. Quite the reverse. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.